Hello everybody and welcome to Provis Gaming and Frostpunk, a game that released last week that I have been looking forward to for months, so I am very excited to be playing it for you all today. For those of you who are not aware, Frostpunk is a steampunk city builder survival game. The basic premise in this alternate steampunk universe is the Earth very suddenly and unexpectedly froze over. Lots of snow, lots of ice, was it some major climate action, something else, we're not entirely sure yet, that story unfolds as you play. But all of a sudden, the whole world is frozen and we are playing as the last remnants of civilization. So people who fled north using a giant steampunk uh, heat generator to try and keep themselves alive. If that generator ever goes out, then so too does our last heat source and we will all die. Now this game is brought to us by the same developers uh, who made This War of Mine, 11-Bit Studios. And that means you already know these are developers who have no qualms with uh, uh, addressing the dark and morally questionable themes when you push humanity to some sort of an extreme. Does it bring out the best of us or the worst of us? And that is on full display here in Frostpunk. I am extremely excited to play it. Let's go ahead and start up a new game. We are going to start up the A New Home scenario. And let's see. To preserve civilization from the chaos of its own downfall, we have fled to the end of the world. We'll have to adapt to survive. Who will we become in the process? We don't have to customize. Default difficulties are perfectly fine. Let's get started. We fled from London and crossed the sea to reach the frozen north. On the way, our convoy was hit by a blizzard and scattered. A handful of us managed to reach the site of this generator, only to find it frozen solid and abandoned. Why is no one here? Did any of our people survive the blizzard? Are there any others out there? Whatever we do, we should expect the worst, now that the world as we know it has crumbled. Alright, we have to survive. Now, exactly where this takes place is not abundantly obvious to me. It can't be the North Pole, because there are trees and stuff. So, if we fled from London and crossed a sea, that just sort of implies to me that maybe we fled uh, into Norway, Scandinavia, or maybe we just went straight over the North Pole, and now we're in, like, Northern Russia. I have no idea, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, it looks like off the bat we're in some sort of a crater. I actually don't think that's the case. I think this generator might have been on uh, when the cold came, and it kind of created this wonderful heat radius around us, and then the snow just built up around that heat and formed a giant ice wall. Look at this. It's all made of ice. Give you an idea of just how much the world has frozen over. It's worse than the Ice Age. Anyway, all right, so here we are. This is our generator. You can see the steampunk aesthetic here, which I absolutely love. I really do enjoy steampunk, and this looks pretty good. And every building is going to be kind of designed in this sort of fashion. There's our little civilians down there. Hi, guys. How y'all doing? They're kind of sticking around the generator trying to stay warm, but right now our generator is not on. We need to get some coal together so we can activate the generator and try to get some life in this region. Now, as far as our uh, resources, we have coal up here. Then we have wood, steel, and steam cores. Steam cores are some sort of a late game resource we'll have access to later. You sometimes need this to build really important buildings, um, but we won't need to prioritize these right away. We also have raw food, which can then be converted into food rations. And obviously that helps make our food go a lot longer, so that's something we're going to want to do at some point as well. We also have to manage our hope and discontent for our population. Obviously, the more um, you pass tyrannical laws or... Uh, take some extreme measures to survive, like adding food additives that fill your stomach but make you sick. Discontent will increase. You also need to manage the hope of your people because if they get hopeless, bad things start to happen. Down here we have our population. Currently unemployed are 50 workers and 15 engineers. Workers can do most things. They usually gather resources, operate certain kinds of buildings, cook the food, go hunting, and so on. Engineers can do all those things as well, usually, but uh, they also are the required to run uh, our uh, workshops to get new technology, and they run our medical posts, because engineers apparently are also medics. There you go. So they're a more valuable resource overall, and we want to manage these guys as effectively as possible. We also have 15 children in this uh, little last city on Earth. Children currently can't do anything unless you pass a law that lets them work. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. For now, let's go ahead and start gathering up some resources. We know that we're going to want to get some wood, so I'm going to max that out. Uh, wood, steel, coal, let's max that out. More coal, max that out with the engineers. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start getting at least a few people on some wood. Oh, sorry, on some steel. And then a few more on wood. Uh, that leaves us with ten more workers currently unemployed. Do we want more coal? I guess we can go ahead and get the coal going. Well, actually, I think I'm going to want even more wood, because we're going to want to do um, wood and steel. We're going to want to be able to build stuff as soon as we have this coal. I don't think it's going to be too hard for us to get a couple hundred coal going. All right, so here we go. Now, first off, let's just say the aesthetic of this game is amazing. It looks 
beautiful. And here's one thing I really I'm gonna I'm gonna take a second to geek out about something. But look at the frost around my screen. Doesn't this add just a little extra ambiance to the game? It's brilliant. This is one of the reasons I like 11-bit studios. They like to deal with darker um, and more artistic forms of uh, video game expression. It's great. And something like this, it's such a subtle addition, but it actually makes you feel <laughs> more cold as the, as, the, as the player. It's just fantastic. I love things like that. In the same way that a good soundtrack uh, has to be subtle in order to make a movie really great, the same sort of thing is happening here. I love that. It's just a nice touch. Workers are needed. There's so much to do and not enough hands to do it. A quick way of addressing this problem is to put our children to work. Okay, now we have to deal with a whole new aspect of the game, and that is laws. Now to start off, we have adaptation laws available. As we progress, we will unlock new categories. But for now, this is all we have. We could go for what they're suggesting, child labor. Now this would allow us to put our children to work uh, in the safe jobs, namely gathering up resources or cooking food. They can't go hunting, they can't work in the coal mines or anything like that but we can at least make some use of them rather than have them sit there eating our food and doing nothing. This is a pretty common thing that I see a lot of people uh, use uh, whenever they're playing this game. If you do this, this does eventually unlock the option to have child labor for all jobs, but that might be a little bit too much. I don't know, we'll see. The alternative is child shelters. Now these are exclusive, I can only take one of these. Child shelters would allow us to build a building uh, and keep the children safe, basically. They get out of the way, they don't cause mischief, but they don't help with anything in particular either. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to go for this option, and the reason why, if I choose this, this unlocks the Medical Apprentices or Engineering Apprentices. This would allow me to put our children to work in a sort of a different way. They still go to the child houses, but uh, they actually make certain buildings more effective. Either our medical posts, so we are more effective at our healthcare, or our engineering workshops, so we can develop technology faster. And instead of going for the short-term benefit of the children, I think I'm going to go for a different long-term strategy with this game, with Frostpunk, and we're going to go heavy, heavy into the technology. And to that extent, I think Child Shelters is going to be pretty useful. So we're going to go ahead and sign that law. That actually gives us a lot more hope, because uh, people like that we are doing something nice for the children's. What is this, by the way? A stockpile? Okay. We can go to our construction menu here, and this is where we can build our new child shelter. Costs us a bit of wood and steel. Uh, the current insulation level is 2, which means I could place it a little bit further away from the generator, and it still would be fine. If I place it, like, right here, for example, that's still not so bad. Um, it's got enough insulation that they won't freeze to death in there or get too sick. As opposed to, let's say, tents and stuff, which only have a base heating level of 1, which means we want to keep those as close to the generator as possible to avoid disease. By the way, look at this. Look at the people like crossing through the snow, creating their own path. That is so cool. I just love the look of this game. I love it. It's so cool. Anyway, we can go ahead and speed up time if we want to. That'll be perfectly fine. We are gathering up a fair bit of coal. Um, we could go ahead and start up some new construction projects. For example, some tents would not be the worst of ideas. We could also get a medical post, uh, cookhouse, hunter's hut. Gathering post is not a terrible idea. Allows us to gather resources from the nearby stuff a bit faster. For example, if we were to place this over here, that would make it a little bit easier for us to gather up resources very rapidly. I think that actually could be really good for us, um, but I'm not sure it's a high priority this second. Maybe that's something we do tomorrow after we've started up the generator. First thing to do probably is to get some tents. Get some of those built around here so that people don't freeze to death. So we'll go ahead and place a few of these. Kind of... Ah! Not there. That's not where I wanted it. Uh, where's the cancel button? Cancel. There we go. Get my resources back. Thank you. Place. Stuff like that. Right now we have 80 people who are homeless. This will get me like 30 more residences. So we need a lot of tents if we are going to make this work. Okay, we're almost up to the 200 coal that we are going to need. Um, which I guess we can probably do right away. I guess there's not much reason not to. Let's go ahead and place some more tents. Now, people will start to build things whenever they're idle. If they're unemployed, they will build. Which also means whenever they finish their work shift and come in at night is a good opportunity for them to start building things. So queuing all these up ahead of time is a perfectly valid option for me, and I'm going to do exactly that. Right now we have seven sets of tents. That's pretty good. Let's go ahead and start up the generator, and look at the snow melt. Whoop. Food. Hang on. Whoosh. There we go. Snow melts all around it. Now we have some heat. What are the children doing? They're just sitting around playing. Hi, he's waving at... Oh, nope. They're going off and doing something. What are they doing? No, hang on. I'm curious. They're all standing around clapping. Are these kids fighting each other? Um, lack of shelter. It says they're playing, but it looks like they're all egging them on into some sort of an argument. These kids are a bunch of rascals. That's what they are. Uh, it's fine. 
All right, so we have... It was seven houses. We need to get one more tent. Place you right here, for example, and I think that's going to have to be good enough. Um... Plenty of coal still coming in. I think we're going to be fine there. Yeah, we just wait until the end of the shift, and they're going to go ahead and build all of this stuff in a nice, warm location, which I think is going to be great. We do have a new mission now that we started up the generator. We have to secure some food, which means we need to get a hunter's hut or a hothouse. Hunter's hut, of course, goes and hunts things. Hothouse produce, like, is a greenhouse, basically. Um, and then a cookhouse in order to start preparing up some meals, which is a very good idea. We're also going to need to get a medical post pretty early on because people are going to start getting very, very cold. Um, and if they get sick, well, then we're in trouble. Now, here's why that's really important. This is different from a lot of silly builders in the sense that the game does not last for decades. Okay? The game only lasts a couple of months, I think. Which means you do not have enough ch time to have a bunch of children uh, who then come of age and have go through several generations of people. Your workers and engineers are a very limited and valuable commodity. And you need to protect them as much as possible. Having medical posts... Uh, so they don't get sick and die is going to be absolutely crucial. Let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit. I do kind of want to get a gathering hut down in this area. Now that we have our housing under control, that could be good. Um, I really do want to get things like a medical post, but we do need to get some food as well. Now, a cookhouse does not have much heating, so you would want to put it pretty close up here. The problem is it takes up a lot of valuable space, and I know that we're going to need at least one, if not two, medical posts pretty close as well. Uh, and they have a base level heating as w of one as well. And if these are in a cold area, they don't work. So, we're kind of in this awkward position where how exactly do I want to manage all of this space? I suppose one thing I could try to do... I am not allowed to get rid of my stockpile. That's interesting. Hmm. I'm not sure what I want to do here. The child shelter has been built. Good. So hope goes up. People like this. So now children have a place to go. It is pretty warm, actually. Good level of insulation. We definitely can get a Hunter's Hut at the very least. This has a base heating level of 2, which means you can place it further away without any repercussions. I'm going to go ahead and place one right here. This will allow me to assign some workers to go and gather up some raw food every day, which I think makes a lot of sense. We do need that cookhouse. I'm thinking we're probably going to place it out on the outer ring here. Um, simply because medical posts, if they are cold, they don't work, and if we have a lot of people get sick, then we're in trouble. We also want the medical posts to stay nice and warm, so we have better likelihood of people getting, um, healthy. We already have someone getting sick. Okay, see what I mean? Now we need to deal with that. So I need to get myself 25 more wood if we want to survive this. Okay. Um, for the child shelter, it looks like we don't need any workers. For the hunter's hut, however, we do. So I need to pull off of something. Uh, probably... No people here on the steel wreckage. Let's see, hang on. I can hover over this and see. We have 15 engineers currently working the coal. Workers working the coal over there. Another five there. I think wood we definitely need. So let's pull off... Let's pull off the workers from this wood. And one, two, three, four, five here. And then we're going to assign all 15 to gather up food. Now this would be a lot easier if I had signed a law to have children go and do the work and gather up resources. So this is the trade-off we're making. We're trying to go for a long-term plan, and that's going to cost us something. So I don't know how well it's going to work out. This is a whole new strategy that I don't see people use all that often. I'm very eager to see if it's valid. We can pass a new law. You have a cooldown, so now we can do something new. Let's go to adaptation. Okay, so we could go for either medical apprentices or engineering apprentices. Now, if we do this, our kids will still go to the child shelters, but now all these buildings will become more effective. So, our medical facilities raise their efficiency. Okay. Alternatively, engineering apprentices, our workshops speed up research. New technology faster. I want to go for a really tech-heavy build and see if this is a valid strategy. So, I'm going to end up going for engineering apprentices, I think. Uh, but not right now. Instead, we're going to go for... Probably either superfood additives to try and make our food last a bit longer get more food rations out of it. Now, if we do soup, what we're doing is we're watering down the food to make it go around a bit better. More food rations, but hope falls because the food is not very fulfilling, and also discontent rises as they eat it. The alternative would be to go for food additives, where we basically fill it up with some sawdust, and that fills people's bellies a bit better, so they're not as discontent, but there's a chance of them getting sick. Sickness is going to become a huge problem for me. I think soup and discontent is going to be better. Let's go ahead and sign that law so that when we do build our cookhouse, we'll become a bit more effective with it and our food lasts a lot longer. Oh, I hate soup. All my life it's been thin gruel and empty promises. Look, whatever. Shut up, okay? We live in the freaking frozen tundra. It's an ice age. Sacrifices have to be made for the betterment of society. 
Alright, good. Uh, we don't have enough wood to build a street out here, which is what I wanted to do. Um, I'd love to increase our gathering rate here, but we'll have to wait. So these guys are marching off. They're our hunters. They're gonna go off into the wild frost lands out there or something. I don't know what we call it. And they're gonna gather up the food for me. Um, looks like people are just standing around waiting for the day, uh, the day's shift to start. We do have access to a temperature map, which gives us a rough idea of uh, how cold it is right now. And it's currently only minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty cold, don't get me wrong. But it's also not nearly as bad as it's going to get. It's going to get way, 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 way colder later. But alright, now people should be off going to work. We're going to start getting some resources. There we go, it's now work time. Boom. Here comes the resources that we covet. So, we want to get a cookhouse. Um, so we can actually start getting some food rations. Before people start getting too hungry, so I think I'll make that a priority. Actually, wait. People are already sick. We need to get a medical post ASAP. Alright, we'll do that first. I'm um, just waiting for my wood to come through. 22, 23. There's 25. Alright, medical post. Place one here. We'll leave space for a second one, because I'm very confident we're going to end up needing two eventually. Uh, especially since I don't have a ton of heating to start off. But we'll see if we can make that work. Yeah, I need that cookhouse. Um, so now that we actually have a medical post getting started, once people are done building it, uh, we can start sending some engineers to work in here, and that will take care of these two people who are currently sick. They're not gravely sick yet. They just got the sniffles because, hey, turns out it's really cold outside. Let's go for a cookhouse, and I'm going to place you right here. Not super thrilled about the location simply because I know it's going to have terrible insulation. But hopefully people won't have to work in the cookhouse too often. Um, we'll have, let's say... Uh, use up the, once we use up the, what I'm saying is that once we use up the 100 raw food, I'll stop having people work in here and go do other jobs. So hopefully this, uh, the lack of insulation won't become a long-term problem. Alright, we have a note of thanks. We just wanted to thank you. Back in London, it was only the wealthy that didn't have to send their kids to work. In this new world you're creating, we can see that things will be different. It was the right thing to do and we get some hope out of it. Um, the problem is, this, this new world of yours is freaking cold! I don't know. I think there's a very good argument to have uh, the children go and do the work. But again, that's a short-term solution. Uh, I'm going for a long-term solution. And if we can survive, I think we'll come out stronger for it. If not, then clearly we should have had the kids go and do some work. All right, let's speed up time a little bit. Um, so let's see. If we had some idle workers, they'd start working on this. No one is gravely sick, so I don't think this is going to be a huge priority this second. I would like to have people work on the cookhouse so we can start making some rations, though. So what I probably will do... Where are my current workers? I'm going to have some engineers. One, two, three, four, five. Come off of the coal pile and get working over here. Engineers can build things. I think they're pretty effective at building things. So these five guys will come and do this. And then those are the five that I will probably assign to the medical post to take care of our sick. And if we don't have anyone who's sick, awesome. I can have the engineers go do some work and gather some resources instead. Alright, we've already depleted one of our wooden crates over here. Good to know. Now we have a bunch of people who have nothing to do. Um, we'll probably assign them over here. What I want to do now is get that gathering post. So let's build one right over here. Um, something like this is probably fine. Let's actually build out a street first. I'll place you like this. Probably like that is fine. And then, place the gathering post right here. It'll be along the street technically. Yes, that should be fine. Okay, that means if we assign people here, they should be able to gather the resources much faster. So I'll go ahead and assign 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 here, and then probably a few people on the steel. Um, and that should be the probably our best course of action. Okay, I like that. That's good. Let's get this cookhouse built, though. Come on. We need to start producing some food. People haven't eaten in two days. You know how cranky people get when they haven't eaten in two days? Very cranky, it turns out. Yes! Anyway, engineers are doing their thing. Um, everyone should be coming home from their work shift and working on stuff now. So this is going to be fine. The street is getting built, which means we shouldn't have snow build up here. People can walk around a little bit faster, and that's pretty good. And people from our convoy. With basic resources secured for now, we can try to rescue the people we left behind. Build a beacon, scout the Frostlands, and save as many survivors from our expedition as possible. You'll need a workshop to design plans for more advanced building. Yes, we need to do that ASAP. So for a workshop, there it is, 15 wood and 5 steel. Now this has a base heating level of 2, so I can place it on the outer ring pretty safely. I'm going to place it um, probably over here. I think this is fine. We'll go ahead and do that. What we need to do is also place a street so that people can get to the buildings easily. So we'll do... I need more wood. Ouch, okay. Can I do... 
Can't do that either. Hmm. All right, well, we'll have to just live without the wood for a little bit. In the meantime, though, the cookhouse is done. Um, we do need to assign some people to this, so let's get some people off of this um, steel wreckage. We'll have them work here. There we go. That should be fine. All right, so people will start turning our food ration, uh, get food rations for me. And it is going to set to soup, so we can produce five food rations for every two raw food, as opposed to four. So we just made our food go a little bit longer. Discontent will rise a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Let's assign our five uh, unemployed engineers to the medical post, and now we should be able to treat the two people that are currently sick. I actually don't know. Can we just have two engineers working here, and they'll still be treated pretty effectively? I think that actually might be the case. So let's go ahead and have the rest go into the workshop. Which needs a street before we can do much of anything. Mm. Well, I guess one thing we could do is just build a street this way. It's not quite what I was looking for, but it'll be fine. Um, I just want to get that research going as quick as we can. The gathering post is done. Excellent. So now people can gather their resources a little faster. Uh, where else is everyone working? Is anyone working out? We have people getting coal and coal. We don't need this many people getting coal, so I'm going to assign some more to getting probably the wood. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, we'll do that. That's a good That's a good set of event, uh, way to do things. We'll also take off a couple people of engineers and assign them over here to the workshop. Uh, we need a research goal set. Uh, we also need to have a street before this thing will be allowed to work. There we go. We should have it now. Can I add a new research? I can. I don't know why it didn't give me the pop-up down there. But we can. We have a workshop, which means we can research new technology. So here we go. This is the stuff I'm going to focus on really hard in this run, because more technology only makes us more effective, more efficient, and get access to new forms of buildings. In heating, we have access to the steam hub and the heaters. Steam hubs are kind of like our generator. We can place them and it has a radius of heat, makes people a lot more comfortable. That's pretty good. We also have heaters, which we can place in certain buildings, like, uh, let's say, the cookhouse, and make them more um, uh, warmer that way so people are less likely to get sick. That's certainly one option. For our exploration, we can get the beacon. Uh, this is necessary to set up some scouting parties, and this is actually really good because scouting is a very, very uh, valid method of increasing your worker count and your steam cores. Right now, again, we don't have time in this game to have a new generation of workers. The only way we're going to increase our uh, population count is to go exploring and find the survivors. So exploration is absolutely critical, and we will do this pretty early on. Resources we can make uh, people more effective at gathering. We can also unlock the coal thumper, which will bring coal up from the surface of uh, uh, up to the surface of the planet. Sawmills to chop down local trees, or steelworks to extract iron. Um, from, I think, the ice walls, basically, and turn it into steel. We could also go for hunter's gear, which would make us more effective at getting um, food. We get 20 raw food per hunt instead of 15. That does go a long way, especially as our population grows. We'll want to get that pretty early on, I think. We can get a new law, though, so let's do that first. We could go for the engineering apprentices now and just make our workshops more effective. And I think I will do exactly that. Let's make our children actually do something useful. They will be the technical engineering assistants. And that will increase the speed of our research a fair chunk. I don't know exactly how much, but a pretty good amount. Anyway. Alright, so we actually have three people currently being treated. Only two engineers are working in here right now. Um, if we actually pulled some engineers off of here and put five in here, I think it actually... Because I, what I was wondering is if you needed one engineer per patient, but even with three, it looks like the two are doing that, so it can't be that way. I'm guessing five engineers just makes the three people in here get treated faster, and the faster people out there working, probably the better. So we'll use our engineers to that, uh, to that extent. So that seems pretty good. Alright, now it's telling us we can do the technology. It gave me a pop-up automatically. I'd like to do some of these, but we don't have any wood yet. So once we gather up some resources, I think we will go for something. Now what I can do is actually pull workers off of this. Okay, hang on. Let's actually pull the workers off of the gathering, uh, the individual sites, and we'll set 10 to work here. This will get us wood or steel? I think it gets us both, actually. So is that getting me... Oh, interesting. Okay, so it looks like we could get up to... Okay, that's how much wood is currently there. So six per hour. How much do we get, then, if we have 10 people working here? I don't know. That is, uh, that is a good question. Huh. Okay. Well, um... Let's have some people start depleting this resource and this resource. Uh, actually, I think just more wood. We'll just do that. Let's see what these gathering huts can do, then. How much am I getting... 
It's waiting for workers, it says. Well, I have 10 people assigned. Oh, they're all going to go eat something now that we actually have some food. Ah, right. Well, turns out when people haven't eaten in a while, they prioritize getting their meals before they go to work. That's fine. Okay, so now we're generating at least a few per hour. It's probably... It'd be faster if we directly gathered from this, but this way we can have 10 workers gathering from three stockpiles instead of assigning 45 workers here. So this is probably still more effective. What's this down here? A family torn apart. Sir, a woman came forward after we built the workshop. She, she said that her husband and daughter didn't reach the city with the main group, but she's sure they're still out there. She wants to join the first scout team we'll send out. She urges you to hurry. We will do what we can, good woman. But first I have to light the beacons. We can now go for the hunter's tech, which I will do just to make sure that we stay on top of our raw food as much as possible. Uh, so we'll make that our priority. Afterwards, I probably will go for a beacon, so we can start doing some exploration, and then after that, uh, probably heating. As much heating as possible, and then we'll worry about gathering up new technology. That said, I think this is actually a pretty good place to end this video. Kind of a good introduction. Uh, right now somebody is hungry. Well, there's plenty of food, so go get your food and you'll be fine. But yeah, this is a good introduction into the game. You get a good sense of how this is going to work. Obviously, it gets more and more difficult as time goes on. And one of the things I really like about Frostpunk is it ramps up the difficulty through events and storyline very effectively. So the game gets more and more complex and interesting as we go. So I hope you guys are as excited about this as I am. I am very much looking forward to continue playing Frostpunk. If you are excited, please be sure to hit that like button showing your support. Leave a comment with your suggestions. Subscribe if you are new and hit that notify bell to see my future videos. My name is Provis, and I will see you guys next time.